In the next 15 minutes, we're going to build an AI tool that lets anyone in your company pull answers from policies, archives, documentation, contracts, and whatnot. Welcome to day three of the 28 day AI automation challenge. So today we're building a no code rag application, retrieval augmented generation, and that too, without a single line of code using Gumloop. So all you need to do is give me the Google Drive folder link and the question that you want to ask. This workflow scans every document, will find relevant chunks and will generate a clear answer sourced directly from your files. So what are we waiting for? Let's start building this. All right, so this workflow creates a system to answer questions based on documents stored in a Google Drive folder. So I've created an interface which basically makes your workflow look like an application. And you can share this link with your colleagues, with your friends, basically with the, anyone who wants to interact with this application with your workflow. So this is a simple interface. Okay. It takes the Google drive folder link and the question. So people can have all sorts of questions that they would want to ask. So if I am trying to interact with your customer support tool, I can ask questions related to your product. If for example, this is an internal tool and you have shared it with all the employees, then they might have some questions around the policies around, uh, let's say how to ask for a new laptop and you know, all those HR related queries. So here I have this Google drive folder link. So I've got like three documents here. Okay. This one contains human rights policy. Then we have IT and cybersecurity, GDPR. I've picked up some random documents, random PDF files and I have uh, stored them in this Google Drive folder of mine. And this is the complete interface. So Drive folder and question are the only two things that we need. Now let's reverse engineer how this workflow is going to work. Here, the user needs to provide the query and the Drive. Drive folder contains your documents and there's gonna be a query that's gonna come from the customer. Now the most important part of this workflow is how we process files which are present within this Drive. That's why it's called document processing. That's the main task that we are actually achieving here. This is kind of like a RAG application, retrieval augmented generation. So what we are building today is basically a retrieval augmented generation application within the Gumloop interface. First of all, fetch all the files. So this process will fetch, get all the files. It'll return a list of files from your drive. The next step is to read all the contents of all the files. So that is going to give us list of texts. Once we have list of text, so now list of texts is each item in this list is going to belong to a particular file. If I have three files, I will have three list items and each list item is basically the contents of the file. Then I am combining file name with the text that I've read. So I've read the content of the file, but I might not know which file it is coming from. So I need to attach the name of the file with the text. So that is what we're going to do after this. Up until here, we are only dealing with list of files, but now we need to chunk each of these texts. So we'll pass it on to this special, we'll create a new subflow. This subflow is going to do chunking for us. Chunking is the process of breaking down large texts into smaller pieces such that it becomes easier to process, easier to get answers from. Okay, so retrieval basically gets better. Once chunking of all the texts, then we put all those chunks together here. We're going to put all the chunks together into one single text blob using join list items. So here we are using join list item to capture all the chunks in one single large text blob. And at this point, this is the point where users query, which was entered right at the beginning, this will come down here as the input to our similarity search node. Now Gumloop offers the similarity search node. The query is going to go in here and this large text blob, all the chunks are going to go into the similarity search node. This node will look into the query and will find out three relevant chunks that will have the answer to the query that has been asked by the user. So this node is going to return these relevant chunks. Now the relevant chunks are going to go into the AI node, the AI node will have the query, will have all the relevant chunks. This will then generate our answer. All right. So this is 
roughly what our workflow is doing. Let's quickly look at if I click on submit and run flow, this will start running and you can check the run from here. Click on view run. And this is our workflow. It's currently running. You can see drive answer. I have, have basically given it a name drive answer. And this is first of all, it starts with this interface node. If you're wondering what this interface is at the top, you would see add interface here. Currently I'm seeing edit because I've already added an interface to this workflow. So if you click on add interface, it basically opens this up for you. If you have a new workflow, if I will show you, uh, so return to workflow, create new subflow here, you can see add interface here. You can add an interface like this edit interface. So you'll be able to create an interface, choose any header image. They have given us multiple options. You can generate with AI or upload from your system as well. You can pick any uh, icon. You can give it a name. Let's close this you can name it. Let's say this is my drive answer application. You can provide some uh, description, add all the fields that need to be added. There are different types of fields that you can add. So these are basically input that you are going to need from the user. So this way you can design your own interface and your workflow. This was just to show you how to add interface coming back to our workflow. I have the interface. So I've provided the title, the description. First of all, the label of the field, I'm taking the link. So Google drive folder link. This is where the link is going to go. Then the question and basically to output the Google drive folder link is going to go directly into my Google drive folder reader. So here I have given a folder link because most of the files are going to be present within a folder. So let's say I'll have like hundred files within this folder. So I have given that particular link here. So folder link is going. So Google drive folder reader is the node that I have read. You can get it from Google drive. You can read file folder, or you can write files directly into Google drive as well. Once you have got access to the folder, you will read all the files. So you'll basically get list of files from the Google drive node. You'll get the list of files. You now you want to read the contents of each of these files. So you have used file reader node. This is a file reader node that Gumloop offers. So this is the node that we are using here file reader. You can see that drive has list of files. We have three files in our drive and it, this list basically goes into the file reader. That's why it is in loop mode because it needs to read three files. So it's going to be running multiple times. Once the contents have been read, they'll go into this combined text. So basically I'm putting together the name of the file. So name of the file and the contents, we are putting them together. After this, the chunking process will happen. So chunking all the documents, you can see while combining the text, I have added the name of the file and then the contents so that I can clearly identify which text is to be captured for chunking. Now look at the chunking subflow here. How is this structured? I'll get the input. So the input is this combined text. So the file name and the contents, that's the input. So one single text blob I'm going to get. Now, first of all, I'm splitting the text. Why am I splitting? So that I get the name separately and the content of the file separately. So this is the character that we need to split on. So I intentionally put this character there so that I know, you know, which character to split on. Now this particular item, zero index, zero index is going to give me the document name and the one index is going to give me the content of the file. Then the content of the file is going to go into the chunk text node. This chunk text is basically breaking down our large text into smaller chunk here. It takes chunk size as input size of each chunk in terms of number of characters here. The chunk size that I've specified is thousand. Each chunk should not have more than thousand characters. That's it. Depending upon the text size, we'll have you know, a number of a certain number of chunks and all of those number of chunks need to be attached to their respective file name. And that is why we are duplicating here. So let me pull this down a little bit here. What we are doing duplicate operation so that the name of the file, this is where the name of the file is coming from. And I'll get a list of chunks. Now let's say I get 50 chunks. 
out of my document. In each of these chunks, I need to attach the name of the file. That is why I have captured this file name and I want to write this file name to each of these 50 chunks. And that is what we are doing. We are replicating this file name and maintaining a list which is equal to the size of the number of chunks. So if I have 50 chunks, it'll basically create 50 file name, which is the same file name so that we can put them all together. So now input one is basically the 50 file names that we have and all the chunks are coming from here. So this node is basically duplicating the names of the files. That's it. Combined text will put all of these names and chunks together. We are labeling all the chunks where it is coming from. After chunking, we need to put them all together. So combine text and we are then putting a join list item. So one single large text blob. That is what we discussed in the similarity search node. So this is the single text blob and it's going to go into similarity search. Another input in the similarity search is the query. This is going to give us three relevant chunks. You can see I have specified here number of results, chunks, relevant chunks to return. That's it. Chunk size 1050. Here, size of each chunk in terms of tokens. Default is 1000. So this is the chunk size that we have. And here, you can see I am creating a prompt as well to create my final answer. So you are an AI assistant tasked with answering user questions strictly based on the provided context. And I have defined like what the task is going to be. So this is the prompt that I'm creating. In this prompt, I have just added the user query. The relevant chunks are going to come from the similarity search. Further again, all of those chunks are again turned into one single text blob. It's going to be passed as context. This prompt that we have already defined this is going to go into my prompt and that's how this complete flow is running. Finally, from Ask AI, we get the answer to raise a request for a new laptop. The employee's HOD must submit a requisition on the specified format. So all these details have been provided and this is coming from our IT and cybersecurity policy.pdf. So from this document, IT and cybersecurity, we have got our response and this is how you can answer user queries with this particular workflow. So we have basically built a retrieval augmented generation drag application within the Gumloop interface. That's it. You've built your own automated support system that lets people ask all sorts of questions and answers will be sourced directly from your files. So like the video so that it reaches more people like yourself. Comment down below what variation you would like to try. And tomorrow, I'm going to show you something very interesting, something many companies need, invoice processing, a manual process that nobody wants to do. I'll automate it for you. So make sure you are subscribed and I'll see you guys tomorrow.